Hi, this is Susanna Magenheimer, also known as Random Artist 222. This is my project video for Sean Petit's design team. Please note, I do have an extended director's cut version on my own YouTube channel for those of you who want a slower or more detailed video. It would be Random Artist 222, all one word. These are the products that I'll be using for today's video. And the theme of my piece is Thankful for Fall because I've waited all year for the cool, crisp weather to return. The beauty of these products is they can be varied to your personal taste. You can go with whatever you want. Um, and this is just to give you an idea. First off, I'll be using Ranger's brushed silver paper for use with alcohol inks. It has a coating on it which allows the alcohol inks not to bleed through and allow you to get great effects. So I'll also be using an embossing folder for texture on the project. I'm also going to be using Deco Arts Crackle Paint. I have a wide selection of colors that I'll be using uh, on my project. Again, variation based on your taste is totally okay. I'll also be using Sean Petit's collage packs um, that include a lot of this weathered wood um, photography and um, totally gives you that feeling of fall in black and white and in color for different effect. I'll also be using a bunch of Sean Petit stencils. Um, this one happens to be wallpaper. This one's uh, fall leaves. This one is um, pumpkin variety and it's an awesome stencil for the technique I'm going to show you. I'm also using her mandala stencils as well as the new farmhouse pictures that come in two sizes and with their masks and pine cones for a great background effect. I'm going to be working on hard canvas pre gessoed board. I also like to add my own layer of gesso to help smooth the tooth of the canvas even further. So we're going to start the tutorial showing how to use a jelly plate. More details again on my Random Artist 222 channel. These amazing mono prints using Sean stencils works beautifully for this technique with the jelly plates. As you can see close up, you can see this beautiful um, duck egg paint that I used. Um, the the r red browns, the, the copper, um, to create an amazing effect using the jelly plate. There are two variations. You got that traditional I just showed you and a darker, more moodier piece. You also get the reverse effect using this stencil. And if you can see here, the detail that comes out is just fabulous. Um, the imagery captured, um, and we're looking at here more of a traditional pumpkin. You can see the wallpaper stencil that I use coming through beautifully to give these pumpkins texture without actually using texture. There's a benefit to using these shapes is that you can cut them out and use them as you need. Now I'm not saying that I'm an expert on jelly printing. There are lots of people out there who do amazing tutorials, but it's a fun process and I wanted to share that with you. You start with very little paint um, and you want to select a couple of colors uh, to give you some variation in the, in the first pull that you're going to do. Again, there's more detail on my own channel, Random Artist 222. You do want to make sure when you're rolling this out that you create a thin coat. Any excess I'm putting off onto that paper towel. I'm now applying the wallpaper stencil and my goal here is to use some tissue paper and remove as much of the paint off the stencil portion as I can because that is where I'm going to be adding paint to create the effect. You can see close up here how I've removed the, the paint. And you can pull back the tissues as you're doing it and make sure you catch as much as possible of the, of the paint. Now I'm going to pull off the stencil and you can see that there's open areas. The stencil is in there. The detail of the stencil is in there. You sometimes can't see it. And I'm drying it a little bit. I don't want to dry it out a lot. I just want to make sure I'm not making mud. 
And so now I'm gonna add the third layer and you're working, or third paint, and you're working it backwards on this. So when, if you hold up your jelly plate, you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. Again, you want a very thin layer of paint. So any excess I'm pulling off onto the paper towel. This paint also reactivates the bottom paint so that you can make an amazing pull. So, and you do not want to dry out the paint completely to the point of, you know, leaving it there for an hour because it'll be hard to pull off. So now I add the next portion of the stencil, which is the pumpkin variations. When I apply the copy paper now, this pull will give me the separate pumpkin silhouettes that I showed you earlier. Make sure you rub hard to get as much of that paint onto the copy paper. And look how beautiful this pull is. Again, you can see all the detail um, of the prior stencil in there, creating that amazing looking texture. I love that flower in the wallpaper. Now you end up with the leftover. And again, here you're working backwards and you have paint that is almost dry, um, if not just starting to dry. So now this is where you would add, in my case, I'm adding buff to pull, buff acrylic paint to pull the remaining paint off the plate. But you could also add any other color um, because it's not gonna interfere with the colors that you see there right now. So you could add purple and make your pumpkins purple um, or teal or whatever you wanna do. Just make sure that it's, it's complementary to the, what you're trying to achieve. And again, you don't wanna put a lot of paint on here. You just wanna put enough to reactivate the layer that's um, already started to dry. And again, you want a, a thin layer and you make sure not to grind the, the brayer into the jelly plate. You wanna really have a light touch on this. Otherwise you'll move what you have below. And now I'm gonna be doing the pull. And again, rub hard. I start from the edges and work in and as you pull up, you can see that it's already onto the paper, so you know that it's working. And just pull, out, pull it off nice and slow. If you see any paint that's uh, still attached to the plate, you can redo it and pull it back up. If there's paint left over on the bottom, not to worry. Um, you can uh, pick that up with more paint and another pull, or you can use a um, baby wipe and take that off. But look how beautiful this is. And it can be used in a journal or torn up and made into background pieces, whatever you want to do, but it's just yummy stuff to work with. I love jelly printing. Now I'm going to be using the farmhouse pictures to create a faux tin effect. They come in two sizes and they also come with their masks. So you can utilize them in, in a multiple of ways. I want to capture a vintage patina for the tin, so uh, I tried to create a little bit of a rusted effect on the outside edge. Um, I used the embossing folder, as you can see here, to create that pitted, dented, kind of banged up picture you find in an old farm barn, something like that. Um, and I did this all using um, alcohol ink. So since I have this out, this tin can patina, I want to show you something. Um, what I did was, in order to get that shape, was um, put the paper, once I had put the alcohol ink on, underneath the stencil, and I traced it and basically just cut it out. And that's what you see here. So I created that pitted effect with an embossing folder, and what I did is I put the um, paper in the folder, and then I added one little shim of paper, and I ran that through my embossing machine. Make sure you look at your machine instructions to see how that works. But you can see that it gives you a really light looking pressure. And if I put it up against the first pull without the shim, you can see how dramatic the texture is versus the subtle effect that the one shim gave for the texture on the, on the um, picture. So I'm gonna use that to demo how I colored it up. 
And it's like a snowflake. You can never capture the complete effect the same every time, but you can get pretty close. And it's a matter of getting used to working with these products. These are alcohol inks in pearl and in regular form from Ranger. That's an essentials tool that helps to pounce the alcohol ink into the paper. Um, and again, this is a um, protected paper so that it won't go through to the back. So what I'm going to do is start out showing you how to do this. And I'm going to use some mushroom alcohol ink color and just put it on there. This stuff dries really quick, so make sure um, you know what you want to do when you start. And again, with alcohol inks, you got to play. This is pearl alcohol ink, which means it has some mica at the bottom, so you need to shake it up before you apply it. This is in Smolder, and it has a kind of green tarnishy effect that I thought would be a great accent to creating the tin effect. I'm now going to add mineral, which is also a pearl, so I shook it up, but it also, based on experience, it's a color that will dominate the other color, so use it sparingly. And um, now I'm just going to begin to pounce, and this is going to create what I call the, the foundation layer for the um, the tin the tin patina effect. And um, I'm going to add a little bit more mushroom because it's not quite dark as I want it. So now I'm going to pounce that out again. And alcohol inks keep reacting with each other. So the more you pounce and play with it, the more interaction you get. I'm quite happy with this for the foundation. Now what I'm going to do is add the slate color of alcohol ink and with some blending solution which actually dilutes the color and I'm pouncing that in and it's interacting with that base layer. How much of a patina you want depends on what you're looking for. The more you play with it, the more it interacts. So pick a point where you want to stop and that becomes your tin patina. And this is where I'm at right here, that silvery goodness. Now I'm going to take the uh, weathered wood um, collage packs from Sean Petit and tear them up and start creating my background. Like I said, I'm using black and white and color to give me some interest. And I like this because when I set up my pumpkins and my um, focal images, it'll look like there's a wood board behind it. Obviously when you add the paint and everything, things disappear, but enough of it will show to create the emphasis. So now I'm just laying out where I want to glue everything, taking a snapshot, and now I have my map so I can go back and glue everything down. So this is my final glued down background. And as you can see, I've added some other textural elements like those die cut leaves on the right. I've also added some die cut hexagons, which reminded me of beehive. Um, and I've also added some um, drywall mesh for additional texture and at the bottom I've added it as a shelf to have my focal images sit upon. And I've also added some texture paint and that's more like an impasto paint or a very thick paint that allowed me to get some more texture. Again more details and um, the best ways to glue some of this down are on my Random Artist 222 ch channel. So now I'm working on some of my focal images which includes this pumpkin which my husband took a photo of, our Halloween pumpkin this year and then we printed it out and cut it. Um, I'm kind of playing with the different pumpkins I'm gonna use. And the one that you see there with the crackle effect was from a jelly print, um, but I'm working on this pumpkin first. And what I wanna do is give it a little um, zhuzh. So I'm going to add um, some of the deli um, paper that I use to, um, to um, remove paint from my jelly print and I'm going to apply it directly onto the pumpkin. I'm going to glue it on both sides. Uh, I should say I'm going to glue it on the pumpkin and glue it on the back of the deli paper because the more glue I can apply to this, the more that it soaks into the paper and allows you to get a transparency, um, which is what I'm doing here. See how transparent that is so I can see the ridges of the pumpkin below it. Um, I'm also sealing it by doing that. So now I have my focal images and I have my background and you can see that they're glaringly different. So, but I want to see how the focal images sit on it. So now what I'm going to do is the scary part, which is adding the antiquing effect. I use golden acrylic satin glaze, um, basically for me almost a 50-50 ratio. And that's burnt umber 
that I'm adding. And yeah, don't mix with a brush. Use a palette knife. I was just lazy here um, because more of it ends up in the brush than you want. Um, so now I'm applying it to the collage and I'm wiping it back with a baby wipe. And again, wiping it back is based on your own taste, how much of the background you want it to show and not. And this is a completed piece. And as you can see here, it tamps down that all that glaring paint that I had put on earlier um, to this beautiful beehive wax effect that I was trying to create. And look how it got into all these nooks and crannies, just gorgeous. The leaves look like they're embedded in dirt, like they're on the forest floor, which is the effect I was going for. I love those pops of turquoise that you're seeing here and some of the papers below still popping up. And I carried this theme throughout the piece. So I'm just walking you through now the whole panel. Again, that beehive wax effect. I have the, the mesh there as a shelf for my focal images to sit upon. So, I'm, so now I'm bringing back my focal images and you can see the dramatic difference when you add that antiquing effect with the paint to where I had it before with that glaring um, green, yellow, um, blue paint. Um, and I'm just placing my focal images so I can see if there's anything else that I want to do or need to do. Um, you can see too how the die cut leaves are so effective um, as a tool in uh, mixed media art. So now that I'm feeling like I have a balanced piece now, um, the background is in the back, the, the focal elements are up front, but there's still a little bit more that I can do to make this even more effective. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is add some shading to bring my focal images back out a little more. Um, I'm going to stencil in some leaves. So the first thing I want to do is add some um, edging to add some dimension to my pumpkin. And I'm using archival ink in sepia. And I'm just going to use a brush and um, apply it to the edges. Now that I have all the focal Im images shaded, I decided I wanted to have something that would move my eye around the piece more. So I decided I was going to take Sean Petit's fall leaves and um, add little pops of color throughout the, the piece. Not a lot, but just enough to create that, that something something. So um, here's the new stencil set and it kinda, the leaves all come in two sizes. Um, so they have their matching partner, small and large, and I'm going to apply that to the piece using, um, W plus nine inks. And I'm going to use sponge daubers and, uh, do that next. So now you see that I've added just enough color pop where it's not overpowering, but it lets your eye move from place to place throughout the piece. So as you can see in the final shot here, I've added shadows using my General's Charcoal Extra Soft Pencil in 6B and the word thankful using a die cut along the border of the pumpkin. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspired you. And again, my extended version is available on my YouTube channel, Random Artist 222, all one word. Hope you have a great day, and thanks for watching.